Now, take your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 4. Verse number 7. The Bible says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You know what that treasure is? The Holy Ghost. In an earthly body. He's, he's living in us. Mm. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have the same, the, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. I'm gonna just, I guess I'm going to just tell you, you can't go wrong with Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might be through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we thank not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I want to preach tonight for just a few minutes, the Lord help me. Oh, have you ever felt like a bug on a windshield? Have you ever felt like a bug on a windshield? Now, some time ago, I was leaving the house going to the VA hospital in Columbia, South Carolina. And I go the back way, and as I go the back way, there's a little community that we go through uh, called Bone Town. They call it Bone Town because on a Saturday night you could get more bones broke there in about an hour than you could at a Clemson football game on a Saturday. So say amen. <laughs> but it was a little town, a little community called Bone Town. And as I was going through there, Brother Doug, I noticed this bug. Pretty good sized bug latched itself to the windshield. And when it did, I just caught it, sort of glanced at it and then didn't pay it any attention. Well, the further down the road I got, I happened to look over there and that bug was still hanging on the windshield. Now, I don't know how it is up around here, but down home, if you run about 60 miles an hour and a bug hits your windshield, what normally happens down home is it gets squished. It splatters. Not this big bug. This bug just was there. I mean, he was there. He had some big old eyes. I wish I could bug him out. He had some big old eyes, just like a bug. Now, as we were going, as I was going down through there, got a little further down the road, I noticed this bug was moving up and down on my windshield, and he was going back and forth on my windshield. You know, that's the way it is in our life a lot of times. We're up one day, we're down the next. We wobble to the right. We wobble to the left. We have good days. We have bad days. We have days when everything's pretty good and running good and running well. Then we have other days when everything just seems to fall apart. That kind of reminded me. I thought, boy, there's something about that bug on that windshield that we certainly could apply to our life. And I thought about this. If you ever feel like a bug on the windshield, the first thing you need to realize is this, that what you're going through, whatever it may be that you're going through, somebody's watching. You see, what that bug did not realize, Brother Ray, the same man, which at that time was me, that had his hand on the wheel, was watching that bug. 
Do you realize God who breathed into you and I the breath of life and we became a living soul, the same God that, that saved us, that birthed us into the family of God? He not only molds us and makes us and shapes us, but he watches us as well, keeps his eye on us. Kind of like I remember one time I was reading about a potter. And the writer said that any time a potter gets that clay ready and fashions and puts it in that firing chamber into that kill and shuts the door, they tell me that, that writer said there's a little peephole. In that, on that door in that firing chamber inside that kill and he'll look inside and see what, how that pot's you know, coming along how it's, it's, is it baking just right and every now and again if he needs to turn the heat up on that pot he'll turn it up but he'll look in there and see how it's howling it Hey, we got a God that'll never allow anything to come into mind in your life that He doesn't have His hand on, yes, that He's not watching over you and I. That bug, He didn't, listen, that bug had no way whatsoever of knowing that I was watching Him as we was going down the road. Matter of fact, a couple of times, Brother Jack, I reached over there to flip my wiper on to shut him, to to push him off but the Holy Ghost wouldn't let me do it so I just kept watching him now I don't know if I told you this or not now I didn't watch I watched the road Cindy as well my wife's looking at me that's evident I'm here to preach this but I had my eye on him I was watching the road and glancing at him I'm going to tell you there's nothing that you and I ever go through in life that God doesn't have his eye on me has his eye on you just like I had my eye on that bug Hey, there's sometimes we may think God's forgot all about us. There's sometimes we may think God doesn't care. But I promise you, praise God, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how hot it gets, no matter how troublesome the trial may be, God's a watching and He'll never turn that heat up too much that you can't get through and handle it. So when you feel like a bug on the windshield, remember what Job said in the Bible. He said he would draw not his eyes from the righteous. Right. Hey, that bug did not realize it, but I was watching him just like the Lord watches the clay as he keeps his eyes on you and I. I was making sure everything was running well with that bug. If you ever feel like a bug on the windshield next time, remember somebody's got their eye on you. They're watching. Number two, something else I want you to notice. When you feel like a bug on the windshield, second thing you need to remember is what you're holding on to hadn't changed. Oh, praise God. That bug was hanging on for dear life. I wish I had a visual aid where you could see that bug because see, I can see him in my mind right now. He was hanging on for dear life. And what he didn't realize, what he was holding on to, which was the windshield, yeah. it hadn't changed one bit. It hadn't gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure you're well aware of this, do you realize there's things change in life? Sure, right. I mean, if you'd have told me, praise God, I had to look like the Long Ranger going into Chili's to get a bite to eat, or going, praise God, into Cheddar's to get some food. If you'd have told me I'd have had to put on a mask and look like a surgeon to go in there and devour some food, I'd have never believed you. Right. Things change in our life. Sure. Again, one day we're up, one day we're down. Yeah. Take your halo off and put it under your pew tonight. Yeah, listen, there's days when I'm way up here and there's days, praise God, when I can sit on a penny and dangle my feet off of it. Up and down, up and down. But remember now, what you're holding on to hadn't changed. He said in Malachi 3, 6, I believe it is, I am the Lord and I change not. <laughs> oh, my soul. Scenery around that bug was getting different now. Oh, by the way, did I tell you, in Bone Town, which is the backside of Camden, South Carolina, you're still about an hour, hour and 15 minutes from Columbia. That's where I was going to the VA hospital in Columbia. It's about, about, about an hour and 15 minutes, so good enough 35, 40 miles. That bug's hanging on. I'm running 60 and 65 miles. When you hit the interstate, you can do 70. Now you think about it, that scenery for that bug had changed. Scenery in our lives changed. Things around us changed. Right, right. 
I'm going to tell you, people will change. It's, it's really good. It blesses my heart to come back to Manuel Baptist Church and see faces that's been here, for, I mean, since ground zero. And it's really good to see people that, new faces that have come in. That's a real blessing. But you know, I can remember some and where they're seated. Now they may be out because of the Chinese virus, but if they've up and gone, some of them's passed away and went home to be with the Lord. But people change, things change, situations change. But that bug was holding on to something that, praise God, had a hold of him, and it wasn't going to change. Hey, the Lord's not going to change. The Lord's not going to forget where you're at. The Lord's not going to give up on you. Hey, the Lord's not going to throw in the towel on you. Hey, just keep going to it. Keep seeking Him. Keep trusting Him. Keep believing Him. God's still on the throne. Give you something else real quick about this bug. Next time you feel like a bug on a windshield, not, not only should you remember when, wherever you're going, somebody's watching. Not only should you remember what you're holding on to hadn't changed. But thirdly, you need to remember this. What you're going through might just simply be the way to get somebody else to where you need to be. <laughs> I thought about this, that old bug. He endured a lot to get me to the hospital. See, he was arriving with me. But I was going to the hospital. He was hanging on for dear life. He didn't know where I was going. I look back, Miss Amy Joe, in my life, my mama, she endured a lot, Brother Doug, to see me come to Jesus. You see, I thought I w that bug was hanging on for dear life. I thought I was doing him a favor. He was really doing me a favor. Yeah. He's teaching me something going down the road. My, hey, you in here, let me ask you something, Mom, Dad. You that have these little ones that's gotten saved over the last few weeks and, and those whose, whose burdens have been lifted, has it been worth every prayer? Oh, yeah. Has it been worth every heartache? Sure. Has it been worth all those sleepless nights? Has it been worse? I mean, just sacrificing and, and getting up early and getting them ready and bringing them to the house of God? Sure. I remember when Allie was born, most of you know Allie's, Allie was pretty mature. She's our adopted daughter. And she was pretty mature, weighed two pounds, nine ounces. And Allie, we prayed for her, prayed God would watch over her. Doctor said she'd never have a mind, said she'd never be able to comprehend. Said she'd never be able to do a lot of things physically, mentally, and emotionally. I'm proud to report to you she's an ABC student, and that's a lot. Yeah. I'm proud to report to you she's a good youngin. Amen. But I'm more proud to report to you that she's been saved. Yeah. Got saved here July the 21st of last year right here in the church. Yeah. Oh, listen, I'll never forget it. Your pastor, our pastor won't either. Never forget it. See, now I want to ask you something. Been worth every sleepless night? <laughs> Woo! Was it worth every heartache? Every, every, now, Allie's a good kid. She might have given us a little trouble here and there, but so does all teenagers. And if yours don't, buckle up, hang on somewhere down the road. It'll happen. Only I could preach this and get away with it. I promise you that. Just feeling like a bug. Now can, can you picture a bug on your windshield? A big old ugly bug. I mean right there in the middle of that windshield. Now watch this. I thought about this. Remember this. And I'll wait. Listen. Remember the trials you go through in life, they're worth it. It may not seem like it at the time, but it's worth it. And listen, I don't belittle. Some trials are weighty. Some heartaches are rough. Some sorrow and suffering are not be taken away to you and I get the glory right. let me say this real quick in remission about Mephibosheth I'm glad his feet was under the king's table don't misunderstand me but Mephibosheth wasn't healed till he got to heaven right. he was still crippled right. in other words he was still carrying some things some wounds, some scars you'll carry some wounds, you'll carry some scars there'll be some sleepless nights but praise God it's worth it yeah. give you this and I'm done 
Always remember this if we, when you get to feel like a bug on the windshield. Whatever you're going through ain't going to last forever. You can't find this in a book, trust me. You, you, you got to experience this bug on the windshield. And I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to preach it. I was trying to get out of it. God said, this is what you got. I looked at everything. I got a briefcase lamb full of messages. I can to keep coming up. But it ain't going to last forever, Mom. Dad, what you're going through won't last forever. But Richardson, about an hour, 15 minutes later, I will end, praise God, to the VA hospital in Columbia. Now let me explain something real quick. I told your pastor I wasn't in the military. I was in the military, but I didn't serve this country like many of you veterans did. I was only in there 90 days. I had to get out on a medical discharge. So when we go to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and that's where we're going, and when we leave here tomorrow, Lord willing, and we go into the shows and they want the veterans to stand, I don't stand. Because I don't feel worthy to do that. Some of you've been in Nam. Some of you went to, I mean, went over in Korea. Some of you in Iraq. Some of you've been in, in, in the military and served in a, in a capacity that I can't. I'm not worried to shine your shoes, but I do get the hospital benefit, the, the doctor's benefit. So that's why I was going there. And I told you that to get that off my heart. Cause I didn't want you. I didn't want a preacher to think I told him was not so. So that would be bad, be lying to your pastor. But anyhow, when I got pulled up in that that parking lot at the VA hospital now remember what you're going through is not going to last forever that bug hitched a ride and he rode for about an hour and a half he covered probably about 60 miles hanging on for dear life scenery changing on him every step of the way I mean going through a whole lot of a lot of turbulence anybody ever been through some turbulence I'm talking about hardships and valleys in life storms when I pulled in the parking lot of that VA and pulled up there and parked my truck and all of a sudden I looked over at that bug and I'll never forget it I'm sitting here behind the wheel had my seatbelt on I just unhooked it my wife's over there sitting there and all of a sudden I glanced at that bug and that bug glanced at me cut them big old eyes over at me then you know what he done flew away he rode all the way almost a two hour ride to get from Bone Town which is Camden, Camden, South Carolina all the way to Columbia, South Carolina probably to him it probably seemed like an eternity probably seemed like a, a lifetime but then the day came when I parked fly away it ain't going to be like this forever. Right. One day, either by the way of the grave, Lord said, let not your heart be troubled. Right. You believe in God, believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many mansions. Yeah. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. For the child of God, when we leave this world, if it's by the way of the grave, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. Hey, listen, if he comes today, one day he's going to descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And if we're done checked out, the dead in Christ arise first. But we which are alive and remain will be caught up. Just like that bug. To meet the Lord in the, in the clouds and forever be with the Lord. See, when we lay our Isaacs down for that final time, where we're going, It'll be worth it all. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.